Hi there, I'm Darren McDermott and you're watching The Week Ahead. I have Jared Davis on the line from Smile Global Management in London for a markets preview. So Jared, the Fed will release its much-awaited monetary policy statement this week. Now markets are quite anxious to read the tone of the Fed's take on the economy and find any clues to when the Fed will actually raise interest rates back towards normal levels. So what sort of tone are you expecting and how do you think markets will react? Uh, well, with the Fed, uh, basically last time that Yellen spoke, she said that the, the Fed are um, uh, obviously looking at the issue of raising rates, but they are particularly watching employment data and inflation data. So the market knows now it needs to watch those two particular areas, employment and inflation, to figure out when the Fed are going to raise rates. Now, in terms of employment, NFP obviously has become now Above 200,000 the last few months, it's been kind of roaring away. Um, other data points have been a bit mixed, but generally things look to be getting a bit more positive. Now, because of that, there are some people in the market that feel that the Fed will probably start to become a little bit more hawkish. Maybe, you know, maybe it could be this statement that she starts or that they start kind of, you know, hinting towards a rate hike and when that might be. Now, most analysts don't expect that. You know, if you look at the data as a whole, the U.S. chugging along nicely, the taper's going well. You know, it's improving in the right way, but it's not, it's, you know, it's not, it's not, it's not uh, booming or anything like that. It's nothing to get too excited about. So there's a, there's a good cause for the Fed to just kind of stay as they are, slightly neutral slight, slash dovish, uh, which is what I'm expecting. So basically what I'm expecting for the FMC statement is for the Fed to kind of maybe stay as they are, just acknowledge that the, the employment data has been quite good, but kind of rein in everyone's expectations, let's not get too carried away, which will probably cause a temporary sell-off on the US dollar. But generally, uh, if you look at the data, it's getting better. And, and I, maybe not this week, but over the coming maybe one or two months, we expect the Fed to become more hawkish, um, which will basically support the dollar anyway. So long, you know, medium term, we're kind of buying the US dollar, but there could be a little bit of disappointment um, if she isn't as hawkish as, as some people might hope this week. And of course, we also have some Eurozone data out this week. But Jared, what will you be watching the most and how do you expect the Euro to trade? Well, uh, Europe is all about CPI, um, inflation. It's all about low inflation. That's the whole thing what the ECB are trying to battle. Um, so obviously we're watching the, the German CPI figures because they're kind of a prelude. And then, of course, the European CPI figures later on in the week uh, to see how if that's improving or if it's getting worse. The risk at the moment is that it's, it's going to stagnate and get worse. If it comes out lower, um, the markets will then become concerned that the ECB need to do more. Um, either one of those scenarios will mean a sell-off for the euro because if it comes out worse than expected, that's obviously bad news in itself. Plus, the, the ECB have got to do more easing, which is maybe QE, which of course is, is bearish for the euro. Uh, if it comes out a little bit higher, um, the ECB are in wait and see mode. So basically, if it comes out a little bit higher, it's not even necessarily that positive for the euro because the ECB aren't going to change their policies anytime soon. They're not going to they're not going to remove the negative deposit rate. They're not going to change any of the things they've introduced, which of course are all bearish for the euro. So it's only really downside risk for the euro. So even if it comes out slightly better than expected, any rallies will be short lived. So we're basically selling the rallies on the euro, um, and we're watching those CPR figures, with, you know, particularly closely. Moving over to Asia. We have China manufacturing out this week. Now, what are you expecting to see from Asian markets this week? Um, the Asian markets, the Chinese data, um, kind of been improving lately. We had a kind of a, a, a period, of maybe a couple months ago, a few weeks ago, where Chinese data was coming out, uh, was showing contraction, and uh, or, or the growth wasn't as, as kind of fast as the markets anticipated. Lately, the last few pieces that we've looked at have kind of been a little bit better. Um, in terms of the markets, in terms of particularly currencies, which we look at, basically this has the biggest effect on the Australian dollar, really. Um, and of late, it hasn't really had too much impact. But what I've noticed, or what we've noticed as a, as a trading team, is generally if the, if the Chinese data comes out negative, it doesn't really have too much of an impact on the Australian dollar. But if it comes out positive, the market is using that as an excuse to buy Australian dollars. So effectively... Um, it's kind of a win-win situation for Aussie traders. So if you, if, if you see the, the Chinese data come out better than expected or even as expected, we could look for a little rally on Aussie dollar. If it comes out worse, we, you know, there's, not, there's limited risk to the downside in Australian dollar because the market focuses on other things. So that Chinese data at the moment is actually quite interesting um, because we, we're using that as basic kind of opportunities to, to get in along on the Aussie dollar, uh, particularly as it dips. Jared, as always, a real pleasure speaking to you today. 
Well, viewers, do stay tuned as there are plenty more just like this heading your way. Goodbye for now. Thank you.